Hello friend, welcome back to a new video. I'm not sure how my voice sounds right now. I am a little sick. This week I got the awesome opportunity to shadow an interpreter at an elementary school. Um, if you're new here, I am about to graduate college in like 40 days or something like that. And I'm getting American Sign Language interpreting degree. I've been interning at a high school in my area, but I got the opportunity to go to an elementary school and work with three and four year olds in like their preschool. Um, and it was a really awesome experience and I fell in love with one of the kids there. However, I also got lots of stuff going on up here and uh, finally accepted that I am in fact a germaphobe. Anyway, today is going to be a really exciting video. I don't know how much I'm going to be talking just because I'm really in the zone right now. Like I'm having just one of those creative, productive days, which I'm really excited about because it's been a long time since I've been able to do that. So um, I have a little snack. My sister is having a party where all of her friends are riding four wheelers at our house right now. And so she made like just little things for them. And I got some apple juice and okay. And this little martini thing. So I'm feeling I'm feeling the vibes. I'm feeling the vibes. And I think it's going to be very productive for me to just go ahead and digitize some things I've been dreading for a while. So I don't know how much I'll be talking because I'm really in the zone. So I think it'd be best just to record everything and do a voiceover of what I'm explaining later. So that is my plan as of right now. That might change halfway through this video. But either way, I'm super glad you're here. Again, if this is your first time, my name is Chelsea. This is my channel, your friend Chelly. I run a small business on Instagram and Etsy called Thread the Line and you can check it out. So today's video is really just for me to show you how to digitize. We have three things on the docket today of what I want to kind of show you. One is going to be more detailed as far as um, shapes and like placement of things. And then the other is going to be more of an outline drawing. And then we're going to kind of focus on text as well. So that's kind of my goal for today in today's video. And we're just gonna run through these things and I'm gonna teach you a little bit of how I digitize um, embroidery designs. So if you're not familiar with the term digitizing, it is the process in which you make embroidery designs. Um, your embroidery machine cannot read a file that is not digitized to be read by an embroidery machine. I have software from Embroidery that's called Stitch Artist and it is a software that allows me to go in and create stitch files that my embroidery machine understands. And so this process can be very tedious but also really fun and so we're just going to take this journey together today and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay before we get into deep with our digitizing I thought of something um, a really helpful tip for you while I was editing that I want to share. But when I got my software, I was extremely confused about what the terms meant, you know, like what the stitch looks like. So if you go and do like a singular stitch, there are tons of options to do bean, double, like stem. And I was like, what do these things mean? What I did is I digitize lines, just singular lines and change the stitch property of all of them to do a satin stitch, to do a fill, things like that. And then I saved it on my flash drive, put it on my machine, and then I watched it stitch out onto an old t-shirt. I saved that as like a little, a guide for me. So if I was digitizing something, I could pull it out, look at it and go, that's what a stem stitch is. And then it was a lot easier for me to like plan ahead to see what the future result would be because I knew how it was going to stitch out. I even put it in like one of those um, hand embroidery wooden circle hoops um, because I thought I was going to hang it up and frame it. I did not. I threw it away like two weeks ago, but it was a great tool so you can just see. So make a circle, fill it in. Do another circle, but do a satin fill and see the difference between them. Do a text that comes with the software and a text that does not come with the software, one that comes with the computer, and you will very vividly see how they are different. Like before anything else that I say in this video, I highly recommend you do that because it gives you the end goal. So you know what you're doing on the front end and actually sit there and watch it while your machine is embroidering it so you know what it's going to do. Now we can get started. Okay, friend, you saw me do this at the beginning of the video, but I'm just dragging and dropping the file into my stitch artist here, and we're going to get started. So before I say anything else, my biggest suggestion is to work with the hoop size that you're going to be embroidering in so you don't have to resize later. 
So we're in the create tab, which I use the most often and using the draw with points, which is also the most used function that I have here. So we're just going to click to make points on the line that I've created. So this is just a simple outline drawing and we're gonna work with that. So what I like to do is imagine how it's gonna be stitched out. I want to make as few um, kind of stops and starts as possible. So we're just gonna go around the body of the chicken to seamlessly do this and hopefully, you know, one stitch. So here I'm choosing the satin border and then I'm able to change the color to black. The software has different brands of thread so if you find thread on Amazon you can come in and say I have this thread in this color palette and it can vividly show you what it's going to look like when you stitch it out. So we're just going to up the density to 2.0 millimeters and go from there. So now we're just going to continue the process. I'm going to continue to draw with points um, on the outline of my chicken and then change it to the satin border. I love the satin border for outline designs. It actually gets smaller than you think. And so going back to what I was saying earlier, feel free to make that outline guide for yourself and show different thicknesses so you can see how small the outline drawing actually can be. So I'm just going in and doing this and um, that's pretty much it. That is the process of what I'm doing for this part. I'm gonna stop talking for a second and then I'll come back with a little bit more information on this design and some helpful tips to think about when doing this in just a minute. Okay, so this design is actually from the TV show Outer Banks. If you know, you know, it is a reference to the flag that they mentioned at the end of season two, which this is kind of the design that they just threw out in their heads. And I had a good friend of mine design it for me, and this is what we came up with. But I wanted to show you this part. Here you can click down and choose different shapes. And so here I just chose a circle instead of trying to go all the way around and try to make a perfect circle, they have it for you. So I'm just stretching this to the inside of that circle because once I make it the satin border, it will kind of go around that perimeter. So another thing that you can do is copy copy and paste it to make sure that they're the exact same size and I find that really helpful. I'm actually going to resize this one just for the sake of it but copying and pasting can be really really just simple way to make sure that your design is consistent and we're going to do that again later when we get to the cigarette.
a second and kind of go into detail about what is going on in this panel on your left. This is kind of going to be your control center, and so I think it's pretty a good idea to kind of get familiar with it. So here on the top end, you have all of the stitches that you've made, all those separate lines. What I like to do is rearrange them to make sure that they're stitching out in a way that is going to be the most efficient for us. And so I don't want some lines where they're meeting to be on top of others. And so you can just drag and rearrange those here. You can change the width here, the density, the color. You can also click this little weird eyebrow looking button and change the ends of your satin border. You can make them round or pointed or square and then you can kind of play around with these things here and you can see how many stitches it is there at the bottom. Your design i like to go up to this bar graph button and turn on the heat map blue is good green is good yellow is a little bit worse and red is pretty bad red meaning that your does your embroidery machine might have a harder time stitching it out i've had it break a needle or tangle my thread when having lots of red and so if i had too much i would go through and redo this design but i'm only seeing red where the stitches are overlapping which i think is good and so we can also come to this needle tab and watch how it's going to stitch out. So here I have all of my under layers and then it's going to go over with that round, that one, that one, that goes all the way around the chicken. So that's pretty much this design. I went ahead and finished the chicken out and then put in some text. So if you see that blue A up there at the top bar, that's going to be all the text. And I just imported it, put my Poglandia design and this one is good to go. As if we move into our next design, I want to first show you how you can change the hoop size on your design, which helps a lot. So we're just gonna go into the grid settings here at the top little folder bar thing, and you can change the background color here as well, but if you go to the hoops tab, you can change to match your specific hoop size and go from there so you don't have to do any resizing later. This makes it a lot easier um, just to work with what you got, you know? So this design is going to be a little earth. We have this image here, and he's just like a little earth man doing a little dance. So I'm gonna just start drawing with points again. Um, however, this time I'm not going to use that satin border. Instead, I'm going to use the fill. The fill is most likely my choice when shading in an area that has a big you know, surface, and then I like to lower the density to make sure there's no gaps in my designs once it stitches out. So we're just going to continue this process for the green. I decided not to stitch out the blue. I felt like that would be too many stitches, but you, you guys see me using the lasso tool just to make sure my entire shape is enclosed, and that will just secure that it's going to stitch very seamlessly. Now for the rest of this design, I am going to do a satin border in black just to fill out all of the details um, in black that you see here. And we're gonna keep that really simple. However, I do wanna try something new. Um, I want to make sure the filled area that I did in green matches up with the border. And so if you can see here, I'm just taking that green line and putting it directly on the black line. I know you can't see colors here, but I'm just making sure those are lined up so that the green doesn't exceed the black and there's not a gap on the inside of the design either. I want this to be a seamless stitch out where you can't 
see kind of where these two things meet. So just putting it on that line, I'm hoping we'll make sure that this is a seamless design, but honestly that's something that I am going to have to test stitch before I do it on my actual design. So now that we have our little earth man, I want to show you guys some fonts and things that you can do with fonts. So this is just the block font that comes with your Embrilliance software. And I just wanna show you how you can put your text on a curve. So if you go to the circle button, type in whatever you want, and then hit enter, it will show you it on a curve. This was super awesome because it opens up the abilities that you have to design with. And then you can do a lot of manipulations with the lettering. You can slant it. You can also put space in between each letter or space in between each word. You can make the curve of it um, bigger or smaller, deeper, whatever you want to call it. You can also place it on the bottom if that is where your mind desires. And there's lots of options. So here I am really just playing around with fonts. I'm not sure the direction that I want to go with this design, but I also wanted to show you this. If you go up to that settings button, the software has different shapes pre-made for you that are really easy to import to your design. So I chose this text bubble and then I'm just going to put that on a satin border. Um, and then that is pretty much Once you're done with your design, you can go up here to File and then go to Save Stitch File As. This is going to bring up a menu bar where you can name your design and then under Shared Options over there on the left, if you have a flash drive plugged in, that's where the name of it will show up and you can save it there. You can also go up to this Save button and type the name again and this saves it directly onto your your software itself just to make sure it's saved. I like to do it in both places just to be sure. Well friend, that is the end of this video. I'm still not sure the direction that I want to go with this design so I'm going to keep playing around with the colors and shapes until I find something that I think looks really good. But I just thank you for watching this video. I hope that it was really helpful to you and I'm sorry that you couldn't see my beautiful face during most of it but I hope my podcast voice was good enough. So until next time, this is Shelly, and I am so glad that you're here, not only watching this video, but here on this earth. If you need anything, reach out to me on Instagram or here on YouTube, and I'll see you later.